our warm up today, folks, is going to um, kind of be a lead in to our lesson today or, or uh, how to complete your chart. Uh, so let's go ahead and, and uh, do a problem together like this. And then uh, when you get started with your chart, you'll be able to, um, you know, kind of think back to how we did your warm up and hopefully this will help you. So uh, we're going to be answering, I think, I don't know, five, five questions, okay? Uh, with this one scenario. So what I really want to talk about is now that we know how to find X and Y intercepts, you know, what do they really mean in the context of a particular situation, okay? So what we're going to do is we're going to write the slope intercept and standard form of a scenario, and then we're going to find the intercepts and the slope, actually, and describe what those mean in the context, okay? So here's our scenario for our questions on our warm-up. It says Calvin Butterball weighs 200 pounds. He goes on a diet and loses three pounds per week. Now, obviously, that's going to be a linear function because we've got that constant rate of change. We're losing three pounds for every one week. Okay? Do you think our slope will be positive or negative? Well, yeah, if he's losing three pounds per week, then that should be a negative slope. Okay, so when we write this in slope-intercept form, okay, that's going to be number one. Okay, we need to think to ourselves, you know, what in this scenario describes our slope and what in this scenario describes our y-intercept? Well, the slope is right here, this losing three pounds per week. So I'm going to write that as a negative three, okay, x, okay, because coefficient of x is our slope, because what it really means is uh, negative three pounds, right, per one week. So it's like three over, negative three over one, all right? Now, that plus B, that's our y-intercept. That's our starting amount. Remember when we did the stacking books? What was the y-intercept? It was the height of the desk. Uh, remember when we did the um, 18 flavors with the ice cream scoops? What was our y-intercept? That was the height of the cone without any scoops. So it's always that starting amount. Well, in this case, uh, his initial weight is going to be our starting amount of 200. So that's going to be our y-intercept. Okay, So negative 3x plus 200 is going to be the equation in slope-intercept form. We're losing three pounds per week, but we started at an initial weight of 200 pounds. All right, let's write that in standard. Now, remember, standard looks like this, AX plus BY plus C. And this is where on your um, paper, make sure you show the process of how you trans translated the equation from slope-intercept into standard. So what we're going to do is since this is a negative 3X and I have to cancel it out, I'm going to add 3X to both sides, right? Okay, and that goes away. So we end up with 3x plus y equals 200. Now, that is already um, in acceptable standard form because our a value here is positive. Okay? So that would be acceptable standard form. Okay? All right, now that was number two. Number three, let's write down the slope. Well, we've already identified the slope to be negative three or negative three over one, thinking about our rise over our run. And the meaning would be exactly what we talked about right here. It means that uh, Calvin here is losing three pounds per week. Okay? When you describe the slope in context, it always needs to be a comparison. We're doing this over what period of time? We're losing three pounds for every one week. Okay? All right, now let's get to the new part that we've been focusing on over the last couple of days, and that's our intercept. So let's talk about our x-intercept. I know that in standard form, a, b, and c, none of them tell me the x-intercept. And even in slope-intercept, the m or the b, neither of those tell me the intercept, the x-intercept is, because uh, the b value is the y-intercept. So the only way we can really find the x-intercept, other than graphing it, which I do want to do in a moment, but... Uh, the only other way I know how to find the x-intercept is to take my equation, and I like to use my standard form to do this, my 3x plus y equals 200. And remember to find the x-intercept, we're going to let y equal 0 and solve for x. So we would have uh, 3x plus 0 is 200. Well, that goes away. So 3x is 200. And dividing by 3, I'm going to get 200 thirds. Hmm, it's kind of odd, isn't it? Um, but that would be my y, I mean, that would be my x-intercept, 200 thirds. Now, when I think about that on a graph, what, uh, that's going to relate to the uh, ordered pair. When I think about locating that on my x-axis, that would be, what, 66 and 2 thirds comma 0, okay? So you could write that as an improper fraction, 200 thirds, 
But in this case, it probably makes more sense to think of it as 66 and two-thirds, and I'll tell you why in just a second. Okay? Let's talk about what that means in this context. And to do that, what I'm going to do is I'm going to pull up my graphing calculator because I want to sketch. I want you to see a sketch of this graph, and this is going to be very important when you do your assignment today. The picture, to me, is very, very uh, informative. So let me pull up my calculator, right? And I'm going to graph uh, negative 3. I'm going to put it in slope-intersect form here in my calculator. So I'm going to type in negative 3x plus 200, okay? Now, I'll go ahead and tell you, I've changed my uh, window screen. Actually, let me change it back just so I don't, I don't want to confuse you. So I'm going to zoom 6 so you... Uh, you can see that it's in my standard screen. Now, you're not going to see anything, right, because this line is crossing the y-axis way up here at 200. Well, your screen only goes to 10, right? I mean, so that's just kind of craziness. You're not going to see anything. So I'm going to go to my window. And to be honest, um, I, I'm really only interested in quadrant one because he's not, if the x-axis is time, okay, it's our weeks, Obviously, it has, you have to start at zero and go up. So I'm, I'm going to get rid of all the other quadrants except quadrant one. So I'm going to change this to zero. Now, based on what you just told me, look at, look at your x-intercept. You just told me the x-intercept is 200 thirds, which is 66 and 2 thirds. So my line is going to cross my x-axis at 66 and 2 thirds. So obviously, my x-axis needs to go at least that far. So I'm just going to estimate, you know, make it go at least to 80. Okay, and that's what you need to use when you're doing your assignment today. Use that x-intercept as a guide to what you want to change your window to. Okay, now obviously I don't want to count by ones. Okay, so let's, I don't know, let's just count by tens. Um, my y-axis, again, I start at zero. And let's see, my y-max. Well, this is where you need to kind of look at your y-intercept. We already know our y-intercept is 200. So my y-axis at least needs to go up to 200 if I plan on seeing that point on my, on my little graph here. So I'm going to go up to 220, all right? And I'm gonna, this time I'm going to count by 20s, okay? Just make my little tick marks a little further apart. Now when I graph, I should see my line. Yeah, there we go. Okay? Now, what you're telling me here, and I'm going to extend this, okay? Keep that on your screen, but I'm going to extend this down here so I can see my sketch here, okay? This is what I'm seeing. This point right here would be 66 and 2 thirds comma zero. That's your x-intercept, right? This point is your y-intercept, which we already know uh, from slope-intercept form, right? We already know our y-intercept is going to be zero comma 200, okay? I'll explain those meanings in just a second, but this is what we just graphed, okay? So our slope, by the way, if you were to count rise over run, okay? Your slope is going to be negative 3 over 1, okay? That correlates to your ilm value. All right, let's explain what this means. Well, to really understand the meaning, you need to, on your graph, understand what your x and y axes are telling you. Your x axis, okay, is your weeks, okay? We go back up here. If you ever forget, go back up here, right here, and you think, all right, this is negative 3 times x. Well, why did you put it times x? Because you're, if you're losing 3 pounds per week. So x represents the number of weeks that he's losing weight. So my x-axis is the number of weeks. What is y? Well, y is going to be his weight after that time period. Okay, because so I can see if I put in 0, uh, if he's, he's done this over 0 weeks, means he just started, then what's his weight? Yeah, it's going to be 200. All right, that makes sense. So the x-axis is our weeks, and our y-axis is his weight, okay? So what I like to do now is when it asks me for the meanings of my intercepts, is I like to go to my intercepts and attach units to these numbers. You told me the x-intercept, and I really am going to change this because 200 thirds just doesn't mean anything really in this context. Change this to 66 and 2 thirds comma 0. Okay, attach words to these. 66 and 2 thirds is weeks, okay, and 0 is our weight. So what that's telling you, put that in a sentence, what that's telling me is after 66 and 2 thirds weeks, Calvin weighs 0 pounds. Now, I know in reality nobody can lose, so until they're down to 0, they wouldn't exist, right? Now let's be real, be you know, realistic about this. 
But in this context, that's what those numbers would mean, okay? So it would mean after 66 and two-thirds, or maybe not after, maybe I should just say at, right? At 66 and two-thirds weeks, okay? Calvin weighs zero pounds. <laughs> Sounds kind of funny to say that, but that's what it would mean in this context, okay? All right, let's do the same thing with our y-intercept. Our y-intercept was 0, 200. Again, 0 is our weeks, and 200 is our weight. So what does that mean? That means that at 0 weeks, okay, Calvin weighs 200 pounds. Now, Maybe an easier way to say that would be that that is his initial weight or starting weight before he started losing the three pounds per week. Okay, that's kind of saying the same thing there. Okay, all right. So make sure you have your slope intercept form of that scenario. You have your standard form. You have the slope and what it means. You have your x-intercept of 66 and two-thirds and what that means in this context. And you have your y-intercept of 200 and what that means in this context. Okay? All right, we're going to practice more of that today. So um, you can close this out and go ahead and go to or finish the rest of your lesson. Thanks.